Hey you guys and welcome to Energy in Motion and um, today we're really excited to be in this dynamic and creative space of Matthew Ryan Hergitz and to get to know a little bit about him and his process and his artistry and so thanks for having us. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Come into my new space. It's yeah. awesome. Incredible. Thank you. You guys you. can't really get like the full scope of it, but it's a beautiful space. Feels good in here. It really does. Yeah. yeah it's good yeah. energy. For the name energy in motion, like <laughs> this is really why I chose this space. Because it's like this whole, you know, it is energy in motion in here. Yeah. Mm. It's awesome. I can feel it. Yeah. Do you feel like it's impacting your work? To be a thousand percent like my last studio was um it was almost the same square footage but it was like it was it was a converted office space so there was like different rooms and corridors and the actual paint space kind of started closing in on me mm -hmm. you know it was kind of almost just like this size and the ceilings were lower mm -hmm. and it was starting to not be energy and motion you know, so I, I really needed to get things free flowing again. And like literally ever since I moved in here, it's just been working. You feel and it, you expanded. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Like you expand your spaces and sometimes that takes uh, risk and courage. And then you do and the world sort of supports you. And yep. you're like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's a shitload of creativity to go along with it. I always say that. It's like <laughs> it's like a goldfish you know, like growing to the aquarium that it's in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if that's the science for goldfish, but <laughs> certain fish grow to the aquarium yeah. size. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess maybe we can start because uh, we were talking about how we would intro you, and you talked a little bit about how what kind of artist you are and the different forms of artistry that you sort of Hold and. Please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's important. Something's wrong. This is three and a half. This is four minutes, and this one says two forty. I don't know how that happened. So I must have stopped one and not stopped the other. And we did it. Just keep rolling. Okay. But they're both rolling. Yeah, they're definitely. Yeah, both I rolling. can piece it together. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to make it more convenient for you because I know how hard it is to sync it if you didn't want to just start. No, over. it's okay. I'll figure Sorry. it out. No, Thank it's okay. You. I appreciate that. Um, just in case. Shit happens behind the cameras and then we move forward. That's all. For sure. Yeah. We won't even edit it out. No, who cares? It's real life. This is it happening in real life. <laughs> and real life is Mind not perfect, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, can you tell us a little bit about your artistry? Because I know <clears throat> you, you have a process to take you to a canvas. And can you share that with us? Well, I'm super into oil paint. That was always kind of like the final frontier um, for like mediums. It's the most intimidating medium to me. And all the old master painters used oil paint. And it's like, it's, it's for a reason, you know, like that it, it's always like, I didn't want to do what happened already, but I always appreciated the medium of how to get there like I love the messiness of it and the smudginess of it and um, in this kind of fast-paced world where like we want everything to happen so fast this medium has really like slowed me down and I've been able to kind of figure out how to ride the waves and the ebbs and flows of my own process and also like matching it with a medium that's slow drying and you know you can stop working on it today and then come back tomorrow and it's still going to be wet and there's um there's a, like a really interesting thing to that you know like the that you have to slow down and um like timing is is a big factor in oil painting so that was just like this amazing thing that's kind of like opened me up, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get to, because you said you also photograph, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you, is that where you start or does it start, I don't know. Well, 
years in the past, I kind of would use references that I didn't photograph, like just kind of going through the internet and clipping things out or magazines and clipping that and kind of collaging them together. Um, but as I guess anyone who's like very serious about their craft progresses, it's like you want to get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to your own process. So now that's evolved into like, I want to be a part of everything. I don't want to just use references that someone else captured and then twist that in my own way. I want to like literally go out in the field, you know, and, and constantly be capturing something that resonates with me and then figure out how to paint it in a way that like only I could have done because I was there. Mm -hmm. So that's how um, that evolution has, has progressed. So now I always have a camera with me, like wherever I'm going and always capturing and always, um, you know, photographing interesting moments. And then I take those photographs and I'm not recreating photographs, but it's, a re it's used to like a reference to recreate a, a feeling, which is ultimately what I'm looking for. I do too, and you, you talk about the oil being slow to dry, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we hear artists say, we ask all the time, how do you deal with creative blocks, and a lot of times they're like, stop and take time. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you use to deal with creative blocks, or are there other things that you use to find inspiration when you're blocked, or? Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I used to freak out, <laughs> which is... I think that's the natural tendency that when something's not working, you question yourself. Am I really this? Am I, you know, authentic? Am I a fraud? Am I a painter because I don't want to paint today? Or am I, you know, an artist because I can't create today? Or, or maybe I can't create for a month or two months or, um, you know, whatever it may be. And I think, that that's kind of a fallacy like you know everyone goes back to Picasso and says you know Picasso he paints every day paints every day paints every day paints every day or he did paint every day and but like that's one form of expression and Picasso was his own artist which is the magic of Picasso and I think the most important thing is to be your own artist and being your own artist doesn't mean you have to be in the studio every single day painting, but it can be going out in the world and thinking about it or looking at it and, and deciding how do you want to view the world. And that's where all these adventures that I go on kind of come into play. Um, honestly, when I don't want to paint anymore, like I'll go out and get lost somewhere and figure out what I'm made of and then that's kind of evolved into now I want to go share these experiences with people who I love in my life and figure out what we're made of and uh, get scared and get uncomfortable and grow and evolve and then when I come back to the studio my paintings do the same with me because like my mind is nowhere near what it was a month ago and my uh, courage and like how I view the world and how I view myself and understanding that they're both one and the same and everything's a mirror kind of folding back into each other. Like that's how paintings like what I'm looking at right now happen where I just like am playing with, mm -hmm. with my mediums instead of like trying to think my way through. Now I'm feeling my way through, which was ultimately always how I wanted to paint. Um, yeah. So now like when I am in creative blocks, it's almost uh, freeing time because I know, okay, let's go do something that's uncomfortable. Let's go join a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Academy or you know, do something that is different and uh, that changes my perspective of the world. Yeah. There's this really famous quote, uh, and it might be Roca, the poet, but I'm, I'm not sure, so 
everybody don't quote me on this but <laughs> uh, life illuminates art and art illuminates life sure. and and it's it's just that as an yep. artist you feed off of your life so mm -hmm. yeah no, no. with that <laughs> being said do you experience fear then always yeah. I mean, that is my, like, one of my biggest motiva motivating driving factor when I was young. Fear was something I was so, had such a close, tight relationship with, but not in a good way. Yeah. It was like, I would, I knew exactly what I was afraid of. And I would feel those things. And I would say, okay, I guess we're not going to do that because you're afraid of it. Mm -hmm. And that got so fucking boring. Mm -hmm. Like... Here comes the fear. All right, don't do that then. You know, like, don't uh, go explore over there or don't meet these new people or don't say hi to the pretty girl that, like, deep down you would love to say hi to or don't ride the roller coaster or go on that adventure, whatever it may be. And that got so old. And deep down, like, more than anything, I, I wanted to explore life. Like, I wanted to be a catalyst for shifts in awareness and thinking about things differently and feeling and and really like perpetuating all all that's good in the universe um so that's that's i just started building a better relationship with fear so now fear is like the big indicator you know it's like Oh, there's that, f that, that fear. Mm -hmm. Now we get to go do that. Like <laughs> every day, I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but every day before class, you're nervous. You know, when I was in high school, I n all I wanted to do was quit football because it was terrifying, you know, playing football in South Miami. It's like the most intense place to play <laughs> high school football in the whole country. Like all these guys are huge and way faster and and it's like, no, you just show up every day. Show up to practice. Doesn't matter if you're good. Just keep showing up, keep showing up. Keep going through the fear. And now painting is, is the ultimate fear to me. It's um, like every day I wake up, it's like I know I have to scare myself today. But it doesn't feel as weighty as it did when I was 16 or 18 or whatever. Now it's like, now it's like right there with me like the fear is is a, a friend kind of thing yeah i really um want you to know that i respect and i admire the courage that you have found throughout the years to confront your fears in that way and create that relationship and befriend your fear because i believe that it takes a really interesting journey and brave journey to, to get there and to get yeah. to the other side of it. So I, I just wanted to say that on Thank a you. personal level. I, at the end of the day, it's like, how do you want to live? You know, like it's like all of us are going to die. And it's like, is that this f scary, imposing thing that's like constantly weighing on you? Or is it this beautiful thing that everything that ever ever is like dissolves back into everythingness so uh, if that's not a, a thing that scares you anymore it's like okay what does scare me and then by moving through those fears that's how you truly are going to live and um, that's what I want to spend a lifetime doing 101 years <laughs> I love that of doing that and seeing what can come from it and the, the ultimate the scariest part is the how do you regurgitate that and then express something that um, is like your own expression mm. well I hope we live 101 years Me to too. support you in that journey and also <laughs> to see where it goes right. and, yeah. and commune then for and sure <laughs> And if it's 80 years, if it's if it's 28, you know, like what it doesn't matter because as long as that's in your heart and you're waking up with that um, that drive, like you're going to live your life no matter what, you know, like if it's 28 years when you have that in your heart, like you lived a full 28 years. So the, lo the, the time isn't 
the the thing but i always say like i'm down to live 101 years because mm -hmm. like there's so many books i could read there's so many places to explore yeah and you're big on adventure you were telling us early and it, i'm sitting here listening to you and also in, enjoying the painting mm. your work behind you and it feels like an adventure and it has yeah. such a vivid life to it all of your work does and and you know, it is an inspiration to go out and explore and adventure. Do you feel like that's what really impacts your work and informs it? Is that a hundred percent? Yeah, I mean, um, like even if, like, you know, people are like, "Oh, you do the astronaut paintings." It's like, yeah, like I paint astronauts, but it's not necessarily to just paint a figure of the astronaut it's like the whole process of creating this feeling of just infinite energy and motion you know like mm -hmm. like if like i hope to make paintings that you can look at it for 101 years and it never feels like it stopped moving yeah. you know like it's just like this infinite um feeling mm. like it's the feeling that i'm after and it's and the astronauts just a symbol and things that i paint are just symbols um but the feeling is is what i'm after and i i, I think that feeling um is most felt when you're exploring um so what i'm most interested in is yeah physically explore exploring spaces but like the most fascinating space for me is like what's inside mm -hmm. and you can go around and and go to somewhere to explore but i always fall back on like what's happening within me like that's the ultimate exploration and then how do i portray that into a feeling what a beautiful gift to people that have the opportunity to have one of your paintings you know it's in ways i love being a storyteller and I like that because you give people and at times courage to go through things they mm -hmm. don't have the courage to do themselves mm -hmm. so what a gift that you walk through those things that are hard and are afraid or that you're afraid of and then you translate that into a beautiful piece of artwork and give that gift to somebody that they can live those experiences through the the art itself yeah it's like it's like almost everything mirrors everything so you know, like Edgar Allan Poe or some other like poet that was on its his own or her own journey and in their own self, they lived a life that was like felt so in themselves and exploring and figuring out how to put these words out. And then like a kindergarten teacher buys a poster and it just has a quote, you know, on that poster. And maybe there's like space in the background and they put it up in their classroom and then you know a nine-year-old or, or or if it's kindergarten i don't know what is it five years old or whatever but like a five-year-old can look at it and be moved uh by that quote and maybe they grow into a 30-year-old man or woman and they have that like quote from that poster like that's a microcosm of art reflecting everything and life reflecting art and so this is just like my way of like that poster with a you know clever or inspiring quote were you that kid uh man i i've been moved by everything my whole life like yeah i was always just paying attention you know like following feelings like my grandmother was a full on embodiment of like pure love and understanding and courage and beauty and gracefulness. And I got to spend so much time with her when I was young. And it really dawned on me in the last year that like, that's what I've been chasing my whole life like to embody that in my own physical form and spread that because anyone that was around her including me would be so moved by her like just that presence but like she didn't 
te- she didn't try to teach you anything. She was just doing her thing, and you would just like just catch on. And I think that's like that's like what a life to live, you know. Like if you can do that in your own way, like just be an embodiment of the things that you're about. Yeah.